Welcome back to the Tidy Room Hanger. Happy Friday, everybody. This is Mike. Today I want to talk to you about 3-0, the Transformers that they've made that are non-transformable. And I'm going to go through that. This Voltron and why this one can transform and those can't. Some of you might already know the answer to that. I'm going to quickly run through what all they've made, kind of the direction they're going with the Transformers line and the non-Transformer highly articulated figures that they make. And then we're going to get back into this Voltron and what this Voltron means to the Voltron collecting community, the Transformer collecting community, and so on. Coming up! So what exactly is... 3-0 doing with this toy line? What are they doing with Transformers? Well, they're making the Bumblebee movie figures that are premium collectible figures. This Optus Prime is 19 inches tall, has over 140 points of articulation. So that's a big deal. Why is that a big deal? Because a lot of times, Masterpiece Transformers might push the 100 110 part count. The part count on this is just amazingly high. I don't know, 500 pieces? parts that are combined to make this thing, who knows. But this is a $600 figure, $599 figure. It is sold out at pretty much every place and it's 19 inches tall. That's where they started more or less. They started making these 11.2 inch tall, 53 points of articulation deluxe figures, which were cheaper, but still very expensive. Highly articulated, highly, 53 points of articulation is still quite a bit. $266. I am quoting show Z prices. It was probably more or less at other places, probably more at other places. But this one here, they were called 3A Toys back when they made this. For whatever reason, they changed their name to 30. But where they are right now, this is one of those figures that it's sold out. But I think that this one uh, is made with die cast metal. And I'm looking right now, it says it's only ABS plastic, but. I heard or thought that this was made with die-cast metal, but they made a few others too. They made the Bumblebee movie, Blitzwing, and I hear a lot of good things about all these figures. I think they're pretty good. This one says ABS Palm and Zinc Alloy, so uh, different types of materials used right there. Officially licensed by Hasbro. So there gets into the pricing problem. The problem with price is, of course, they pay that licensing fee. This is an officially licensed product, 55 points for articulation, die-cast metal parts, and LED illuminated eyes. So I, I just assume they all have the die cast parts. It just wasn't included on the Prime, but I'm not sure. I've never reviewed any of these. I don't have any of these. I've never uh, handled them for the price point of like 266. That's a lot of money for a non-transforming transformer. Then we get into the whole debate of do they transform? And that's really not what this video is about. But I think this looks good and Bumblebee movie style fans are excited. They also made the deluxe scale figure for 179 of Bumblebee. This was still under 3A. This is 8.26 inches tall, and it does have alloy in it, meaning that it has the die cast in it. So uh, these also come with LED lights and illuminating all that kind of stuff. Made of plastic die cast features, uh, detailed sculpt, uh, light up eyes, 55 points of articulation, officially licensed. And so with that, this is a lower price point because it's a smaller figure. And I think stuff like this started to get them to understand. I bet this sold better, not just because it's Bumblebee, but because of the price point. Now, they also sold this Siege version of Megatron for $229, $230. So this was kind of one of those strange situations where you had a toy that was trying to look like G1, but it didn't quite achieve the G1 look. And that's what Siege was. And then the show was based on the design of those toys. So the show looked like the $30 toys that were based on G1 but didn't hit the aesthetic. And then they made a $230 representation of that $30 toy. But I imagine this is really nice and high quality and all the stuff that we've been talking about included in this. But they went down this route. I thought it was interesting. And now looking back on it years later, this is a pretty nice looking bot. They did the same thing with Optimus Prime. So these are deluxe and the metrics on this, they are about 10 inches tall. And so with this, these kind of line up just right for Masterpiece. So instead of buying a Masterpiece Optimus Prime, you could put this in as your Masterpiece Optimus Prime if you wanted to, but it's not going for G1. 
and it's not competing with what Takara is doing in the Masterpiece scale or what Hasbro sort of is doing in there. So there's no competition and that's where the transforming aspect comes in. We'll talk a little more about that here in a bit. But 10 inches, die cast, ABS, and it is full of all those features that we talked about before. Deluxe, high end, $240 for this guy. So they also made some based off the live action movies, the older Bayverse type of movies. This is Revenge of the Fallen, this Optimus Prime here, 11.2 inches tall. So I, I do, I do have to say that movie figures are taller than G1 figures for the most part. And that's just kind of how things roll. But they did make this figure and it is the deluxe scale. So 270 prices kept going up on this up and up and up as they went along. I think this is after they changed the name 230 officially. And then they put out a jet fire to go on him with his parts. And that was 370 so he can have the parts. So this thing's got to be huge once combined. I don't even know the height once it's combined, but it's got to be huge. I mean, if he's already almost 12 inches, this has got to be 14 or 15 inches tall once you have the armor parts on it. So pretty big, pretty hefty overall. They also made a Deluxe Megatron, which was $264. This is still up for pre-order, so this one's not out yet. And that's 11 0.22 inches tall and releasing second quarter 2023. So they're continuing this route as they're working on this Voltron. This Voltron is getting released. But as you can see, none of these transform. What I find to be more interesting is what they're doing with the MDLX line. MDLX as many deluxe, more or less, is kind of how that goes. And they're operating in the seven inch range, which this guy in seven inch is more of a chug scale. So that's not a masterpiece. I was under the impression they'd be like masterpiece scale, but they're chug scale. So with that, this Rodimus Prime is $92 over at Show Z right now. If you want to go over there and pre-order that and get this guy, he looks really good, uh, 90 bucks. Don't forget to put in TH reviewer code if you go to Show Z and save yourself hundreds and thousands of dollars. But anyway, uh, this looks fantastic. He's got all of the same stuff that they did before. And with that, I'm not 100% sure all the points of articulation, all that kind of stuff, but it is made of ABS and PVC. So I thought this was going to have some die cast in it, but I'm not 100% sure. Still interesting. It's still up for pre-order and release date. Still not 100% sure on that one. Here's a Cliff Jumper and it is $88 and he looks pretty good. So these are not exactly Bumblebee designs and not exactly G1. These are closer to G1 than the Bumblebee designs. So with the MDLX, I like it. A lot of people say like Studio Ox or something. I really don't know 100%, but I do think these look a lot closer to G1, but they can't cross a certain line and go to G1 because I don't think they have the license for that, but they do pay for the license for this. And I think this looks good. And it's really interesting that they incorporate details. Like in the foot, you see a tire that looks like it's transformed and folded under and they make it look like it transforms even though it doesn't. So that's kind of interesting touch they add to it. Here's the MDLX Megatron, which looks really good overall. He is not exactly G1 and uh, not really a Bumblebee movie one. So you can see the G1 vibes in there and it would cater to a couple of different audiences, but it is different. It is stylized. And of course it has a lot of articulation to it. Still sort of closer to the chug scale with the 7.09 and it has ABS palm PVC and zinc alloy, meaning some die cast in there. Four sets of interchangeable hands, black cannon, fusion cannon, main figure, and about 45 points of articulation. All these are running 92 bucks, so these are $100 chug figures, more or less. And here is their side swipe, which I think looks even closer to G1 than any of the other figures that they've made. It's almost like they're trying to get closer and push the limits of what they can get away with, but still some stylization in the lower legs and all of that but I think this one looks good and this might go down as the best looking one that they've made and it's up for pre-order right now, but no price just yet. I imagine around the $92 price point. Which brings us to this Voltron, which I know a lot of Transformer collectors do collect Voltron and there's a lot of Transformers collectors that do not collect Voltron that don't care for the franchise at all. But one of the things about Voltron is you always seem to get a Voltron. You don't seem to get any Row Beasts and you very seldom get the vehicle Voltron or the obscure, was it Voltron 1 or something? Anyhow, I do know that this one looks good. 
This one is coming into stock around places and I did watch a review of it and my understanding if you transform yours or you combine yours before you watch my video, uh, I did watch a review, somebody said he had a problem with the shoulder either not going in or breaking or something along those lines and you have to line it up and match just right. So make sure you line up and match your shoulders just right when you plug your arms in on this guy. But let's talk about this. So it does transform into the cats individually you have the individual cats and they all look really good and they all look exactly like you expect now watching a review of this i did notice that it just feels like a smaller version of blitzway and it does feel like they're you're saving money on size scale and of course materials but it does feel like you're saving money on the packaging the blitzway packaging was much more expensive and premium they put a lot of money into that this one is just sort of standard packaging and it was just a little cheaper which i don't have a problem with at all whatsoever because once you pull it out the packaging looks fine it's just the way it's packed and all that it's not quite as premium but the cat's looking great and all the fun stuff that they can do and let's take a look at the black lion so here's the black lion with all his stuff on him and all his gear and obviously he has some articulation to him so he does do his transformation gimmick and all of that kind of stuff and here's the red lion i think the red lion looks fine and just it's all the obligatory stuff that you get with every figure every voltron and so with that i don't see a whole lot of difference with this particular one but there is some difference when it's in combined mode that i am going to talk about and here we go with the green lion and uh again not a whole lot different than we've seen with other ones the articulation on the individual line itself doesn't look like it's any more or less than Blitzway. Uh, maybe more than what we saw with the SOC. But again, I didn't spend much time with any of mine in this mode. I really am all about the combined mode. So here's Blue Line looking pretty good overall. And one of the problems that you get with, of course, every Voltron is that the lions themselves are going to be disproportionate in size because arms are smaller and the, the black lions are torso. So it's going to be the bigger one. Blue lion, yellow lion have the legs, so they're, they're the legs, so they're bigger. So here is the yellow lion with all of the gear on them and all that kind of stuff. So uh, with that, I do want to say they all look good. They all look very well painted. They all seem to carry around the same sort of transformation that we've seen all this time, except they have the new flaps that were introduced when we saw Blitzway they do use those flaps to cover up the legs. Here he is in combined mode, and one thing is, I don't really have side-by-side -side shots versus SOC or versus Blitzway, and I will do that when I do my review. As soon as I get mine and get that review done, you'll see that. But looking at this, it looks really good, and it does look a lot more like the SOC Voltron combined, even though it utilizes a lot of the Blitzway uh, tactics I guess you could say if you look at the shoulder of the red lion you can see that there's a flap covering where that legs tucked in and then you look down lower with a forearm there's a flap there and it feels like the exact same way that Blitzway did it and it almost I don't know if you'd say they knocked it off but it feels exactly the same which it was a good idea with Blitzway but Blitzway is $700 one this one is $300 so I think you get a better value plus the SOC one, they upped the price in the last reissue to $350, so this makes it a really good value. Where this will shine, where other ones did not, is is that articulation. 3.0 is known for, as we talked about with the other Transformers, known for high levels of articulation. So I I don't know exactly the tolerances, how far the elbows go and all of that kind of stuff but it does have a lot of articulation. So did 3-0, by the way, but there were some limits that I was a little surprised to. So I'm curious just how much we can get out of the arms on this one, but we can see some poses they put it in to show exactly what you can do with the rest of it. Here is a kind of a jumping in the air and about to slash with the sword kind of pose, which looks really good. And you can see all of the posability with this overall, and it looks really amazing that it's got all this articulation, all that kind of stuff. Uh, watching the review that I did watch, it looked like he was pretty solid. It feels like he's a solid figure when he's combined and all that, which is definitely important. And he holds together 
and he can hold together for a pose like this, which is very impressive. And he comes with a, a slew of accessories. He's got this saw on the bottom of his foot, and when you can see on this bottom of his foot, he does have a heel spur that I think the other ones pretty much have this heel spur, but most of the time, you don't really need it if you have the lion's feet. But with this, you can see something else. There's not that vac metalized chrome that we're used to seeing with all of this. I understand that there's less of the vac metalized chrome on this than there was with past ones. So that is one of the things that is a bit of a downer. But at the end of the day, if you've got other ones on your shelf with the vac metalized chrome and then this one doesn't, maybe it makes it look a little bit different. I prefer the chrome. I prefer the back metal, but we'll see it in hand and see how it looks, and I'll, I'll give it a fair shake. Now, this comes down to the reason why this transforms and combines and does all that when 3.0 doesn't do that for any other Transformers, and it comes down to their licensing agreement with Hasbro. Obviously, Hasbro and Takara, they do not want to compete with another company making transforming Transformers licensed out. So... Obviously, they're not allowed to. That's pretty much what's going on. And so they're making non-transforming Transformers because that's what their license is. That's what they've paid to do. And with that, they're doing a whole lot of other stuff with all the articulation, accessories, LEDs, and all that kind of stuff to compensate for that. And this thing transforming, really, a Voltron that doesn't transform, I mean, it should break down into the individual bots. And as you can see, I don't think Super 7 did too well selling their Voltron that didn't transform, it was just an action figure. And so, Super 7 could have done all that, but they chose not to, and I don't think that was as attractive to Voltron collectors because it didn't separate into the individual lions. But this is a different license, it's not from Hasbro, and so with that, they have a different agreement, so obviously, they can make it transform, they can do all of that, but Voltron is different than any other toy line that I've collected because it seems like you get a new Voltron from a new company. It's like a flavor of the year Voltron. And this year is going to be 3-0. I don't know if there's going to be another one down the road. It feels like just a year and a half, two years ago, we got uh, Blitzway. It feels like just last year we got Blitzway, by the way. But who knows if another company is going to step in. And I'm starting to wonder if they have the license to this 11-inch scale that matches the original the original 1984 version of Matchbox, or if they've got that and Blitzway, will they be able to reissue theirs at the 15-inch scale? I don't know. That's one of those interesting things. And will Bandai be able to reissue their SOC? I don't know. But this looks like a good value, probably the best value of all of them. So anyway, let me know what you think about this quick overview of 3-0 and what all they do and this Voltron. Are you excited for the Voltron? Are you getting the Voltron? Are you excited for any of these other 3-0 or A3 figures 3a figures that they have made in the past do you have any of them i'd love to know feedback and information on this whole line that they've made like and subscribe i dare hanger out